In traditional, second generation, DBMS, we use a row store approach where each row is stored completely. Multiple rows are stored sequentially in I.O. optimized data structures. If only few cons are required, in the project list, the complete row needs to be fetched and uncompressed. Most of the data is moved and decompressed without even being used. Query engines, which are optimized for analytical queries, tend to use a column store approach. In a column store, the data of a specific column is stored sequentially before the data of the next column begins. If attributes are not required for a specific query execution, they simply can be skipped completely, not causing any I.O. or decompression efforts. In a column store, the data is also compressed sequentially for a column. This is an optimized approach if you plan to perform a sequential scan over your data. Random access to specific attributes in the store does not perform well. Many analysts are touting the use of columnar store databases for analytic processing as the only logical approach to use vendors such as Vertica, Sybase IQ, Parkcell, and SAP's BIA use columnar store approaches. But this is not a new idea. Data management products such as Adabus and Model 204 used it in the past. Note that while IWA uses columnar technology, it is optimized for in-memory processing. A copy of the memory image is stored on disk. IWA uses a technique called frequency partitioning. In the diagram above, one sees that the table trade info contains columns volume, product, origin country. Histograms are built for each column to determine frequency of data value occurrences, as shown with origin and product. Then the system looks for the most frequently occurring values in each of the columns, in the example, top 64 traded goods. It then encodes those values with the least number of bits that can adequately represent the data, approximate Huffman encoding, idea being that most accessed values will require the least number of bits to be manipulated. Now, these values are then intersected with values in other columns, top traded goods from China USA. These encoded values are then placed in memory cells across all available memory in the system used for subsequent scan operations. The next slide shows an example of this and further encoding used for IWA. This example shows the compression steps used in IWA, starting with the record containing name, sex, date of purchase and product. Histograms are built for each column. Relationship between columns are then evaluated causing columns of values with mail and John to be combined. The purchase data is broken up into smaller columns which are then further combined with other columns as shown with week 35W35 and Mango. Finally, depending on probability of value occurrences such as P equals 1 over 512 for mail John Sat. Those values are encoded into the bits 101,101,011 and so on. Notice that the end encoded value is a single series of bits representing the entire row. Following up from the previous slide, there is further compression using delta encoding which compares values of the current row with the previous row. In this case, one sees that a second row can be fully represented by adding a few bits to the previous row. There is then a second level compression by placing the encoded value back into a dictionary, so that other rows with similar values can simply be represented by a few bits. The end result of an entire set of rows can now be represented in one string of bits you see at the bottom of the page. This is an animated slide. The single instruction multiple data, SIMD. Parallelism is used with IWA to further exploit parallelism with columnar technology. In this example, Notice that the query only touches columns A, D and G from table T. And given that IWA groups columns into banks, it is able to use vertical partitioning and load the register with multiple rows of columns A, D, and G into the 128-bit register, thus processing multiple rows in a single instruction. This diagram shows how IWA can do simultaneous evaluation of equality predicates. With the encoded bits shown in previous slides, one sees how multiple predicates can be evaluated all at once. Note that we're evaluating compressed encoded values without the need for uncompression and recompression of data. This slide describes the process of how a customer would go about defining what data needs to be accelerated. Using a GUI tool called the Smart Analytics Studio, 
the user defines a data mart by clicking on the fact table and surrounding dimension tables that composes of the mart. Informix will then use that info to transfer that user data into a highly compressed, scan-optimized format for all subsequent queries that qualify internally. IWA uses a number of nodes, also known as processes, to build the mart. The number of worker processes define the number of threads used to build the optimized format. Refer to the IWA admin guide for more info on parameters for the configuration. This is a picture of the IWA Design Studio showing the rich client interface and how tables and dimensions can be manipulated. Animated slide to show movement of data from Informix to IWA via coordinator and worker processes. Note that there is no requirement on how the table on Informix needs to be partitioned on Informix. The fact table is split into multiple parts and distributed evenly across the worker nodes within the cluster. Bigger fact tables just require enough worker nodes to contain the compressed data in memory. The join strategy between dimension tables and the fact table data is always a co-located join. This means that all dimension tables are fully replicated to each of the worker nodes. Space requirements for dimension tables therefore needs to be multiplied with cluster size, amount of worker nodes. Animated slide to show movement of data from Informix to IWA. For a single SMP environment in this case, it is simply moving all the data over to IWA. In future releases where we support multiple nodes, as in a Mach 11 environment, dimension tables are replicated to each node. This is the referenced hardware configuration for IWA. The X5 system can be X3850 or X7560 as shown with a recommended RAM of 512GB. X5 is capable of 1.5TB of RAM. In mid-2011, the maximum goes up to 3TB and soon much more. The internal disk is used only to back up the memory image of IWA not to store the data warehouse itself. Amount of RAM needed is completely dependent on amount of raw data to be fit into memory, using a 3 to 1 compression ratio to determine what's needed. Thank you.